you know, maybe they can't work anymore because now they have to watch their kid at home or right. they've lost their job or whatever the circumstances were. We feel like we're really doing, you know, a good service to kids and adults out there. And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world-famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? How are you doing out there today? Thank you for listening, and I am Chris. And I'm Christine, and welcome to the 75th episode of the Chris and Christine Show. Do 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 Yes! The number 75, 75th episode. We are uh, three quarters of a way uh, through this uh, podcast adventure. Uh, what, are we going to end at 100? No, but it'd be cool to see we get to 100. To be <laughs> you, well, you said we're three quarters of the way through with our podcast adventure. Uh-oh. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to make the stuff up as I go along. <laughs> well, how's it going for you this week, Chris? Oh, no. This week, I have been on uh, out of commission this week because I threw my back out somehow. <gasps> I don't know how it happened. But it wasn't at work, it wasn't at home, but all I know is I was in a lot of pain with my back lately, and then all of a sudden I woke up one morning and my back was just killing me. Like, I couldn't even move, it was so sore, so we rushed me to the emergency room, aka the urgent care uh, doctor's office. <laughs> and, and they put the me emergency on- emergency room. Well, it was an emergency to me. Mm-hmm. So they put me in a wheelchair and took me inside the clinic- and then they put me on this like area. They did my vitals, like check my blood pressure, all that fun stuff. And then they decided to do an X-ray on my back. So and what did it show that you're an old man? They it did. It, <laughs> it did. So they wheeled me over to the X-ray machine, and I go onto this X-ray table. It's this flat like metal table, and I ask them, "Do I have to like take all this stuff out of my pockets? You know, like uh, metal and the X-ray machine?" He said, "No, leave it all in there." I said, "You sure?" Yeah, but can you move your shirt a little bit or move your pants a little bit so we can see your spine better? Ooh. So I lay on the thing back on my back, and that like really really hurt because my back was in pain, and I'm on this solid surface and uncomfortable. Uh-huh spot so you do the x-ray thing and then they had me flip over my side now Ooh. that really really hurt like the turning motion oh yeah oh man so the turning motion hurt really bad i was laying on my side so they take a picture of that then they had me flip over on the other side to take a picture of that side and i was like so much pain and so i got back in the wheelchair and they wheeled me back across the hall to my other room they had me sitting in and then the doctor said i'm old as dirt so <laughs> what do you expect did he say like um you have the back of a 90 year old pretty much he, say, he says grandpa chris what are you doing here <laughs> he's like you're only how old what <laughs> i know no i think he said my muscles are uh what do you say they were like uh messed up or something like were they spasmed or inflamed or something I, like that yes a little bit of everything you know co- a cocktail of all that stuff yeah that, but nothing so, with the bones themselves no, like you said, didn't have any like slip discs or anything he said that it looked okay oh yeah but it doesn't mean something could not be wrong inside there from their Eek. perspective or something like that he said so from what he can tell it does not look like any fractures or anything like that just all muscle related tissue stuff that's good that it wasn't like more serious but you were home all week and why is that like why can't you work with your back like that well because one it hurts i mean come on you know No, i'm just asking well it hurts really bad when i would move it and sleep and they put me on a special medication two medications they put me on muscle relaxers and pain medicine Mm -hmm. and that's supposed to relax the muscles in my body my back so so that like kind of like loosens them up a little bit to kind of get them back together it's as if my muscles are a piece of gum and someone just like squished it together and packed it oh yeah that makes sense like the back of a lego brick or something yeah and now they want to be all nice and loose and flexible so now yeah. it's all tight and yucky so that's my understanding of it and uh, basically so according to dr chris <laughs> dr chris right so now what they're trying to do is get my muscles to be more relaxed so that they can be more loose so that they're not all tightened up and all re- wrecked up i think my back basically went into a pretzel mode that's what yeah happened. it sounds like it now uh scale of one to ten how good of a patient are you with one being horrible and 10 being an angel? I'm like an 11. <laughs> <laughs> Always, baby. Uh, for reals. How would you assess your uh, kindness as a patient? Oh, I was very, very kind. I was like, okay, I, okay, who, who am I pulling here? Okay. 
I was a one, all right? Are you sure? Yes, I'm because sure. Because are you sure you weren't like a below that? Yeah, maybe. Like I a don't... negative 12? Oh, it hurt so bad, though. You know, I like, know. I could barely walk, and my back was killing me. It's I still feel pain today. It's a week later, and it still hurts, but not as bad. It's getting a little bit better. Yeah. The medication they gave me did work, and, and I was able to uh, loosen the muscles up, and I... And I could walk around and, you know, jump around a little more than I used to be able to do. Well, it was definitely hard having you down for the count, uh, especially at the beginning of the week when you were really in bad shape. Because as you said, you are you were in a lot of pain. And when you are in a lot of pain, the whole household feels the pain. <laughs> feel my wrath. I'm just kind of like sharing the love, you know. <laughs> I say, well, I don't want to feel this pain all alone. You guys got to get to experience it too. <laughs> It was hard, and and there was a couple days when you you really couldn't get out of bed very much because you were well. First of all, the medicine made you super sleepy, like a oh, little I, yeah, did like I a sleep? koala. You know what? You were like a koala because koalas are cute, but they're actually vicious when they're awake. Oh, and so okay. I really would characterize you if you were a spirit animal over the last week. Oh, you really? would have been a koala, probably. Yeah, the, the medication they gave me really knocked me out. Like the first day, I think I slept for like 13 hours at night or something like that. Yeah, a lot. You barely got out of bed. And then um, you were a little bit, uh, what's the word? Not demanding, but demanding. <laughs> Me? No way, man. No way. But I would hope that I was a pretty decent caretaker for you. You are, baby. Christine is an angel when it comes to taking care of, if you guys are sick and Christine is in your presence, she will take care of you. Uh, spectacularly oh that's very sweet of you but please stop getting sick uh, I'm, I'm trying i'm trying i can't help it the yeah. sickness loves me i guess but i don't know what you call this being sick it's more like it's an injury injury yeah, yeah. I, you know and the th- funny thing is i don't even know how it even happened i i think i i don't think i slept wrong i thought it was when it got really cold the cold weather kind of like does weird things with your muscles you this know? is what happens when you get old or that, that, that <laughs> it could be if i like the i i don't know i did not like like do any crazy exercises or any crazy movements? Or- yeah, you know, when I've thrown my back out before, it wasn't from anything dramatic. It was like I woke up one day and then all of a sudden everything was a mess. And I remember when I was up at my parents' house for a weekend taking care of Zeke and I woke up on, I think it was on a Sunday morning and I had thrown my back out and I didn't know how I was going to be able to drive home the wow. six hours and I had to be on muscle relaxers. But I was in so much pain, like it hurt to even breathe because it was stressing those muscles specifically. And so like when you were going through it, I was trying to be very, very nice because I know firsthand how that feels. And so it's not like I'm just taking care of you and see you in pain. It's like I was feeling it with you and like having empathy and like sympathy and just wishing I could fix it for oh, you. Oh, thanks, babe. Hey, did you see my back muscles, how they were like swollen? My back, my lower back it, had, here. it looked like you had little tangerines there because oh, it was gross. like, well, like I'm just saying because the muscles were balled up. Yeah, they were all tensed up and balled up and swelled up and everything. So it was pretty, yeah. it was pretty nasty but stuff. But you're really funny when you get sick or injured. You keep messing with that area. So you kept well, like... Wait, what, what do you mean it keeps messing with my area? You kept like trying to get the little electric massager that's like for your back. And you're like, if I turn it on higher, maybe it'll get it worked out faster. Or maybe I can push you know, it I don't think myself. that worked out too well. I think Exactly. Because you you made your muscles angry, honey. Yeah. That's what you always keep telling me. They're angry at me. Yeah. Why is, why is everybody angry at me all the time? <laughs> my goodness. I'm trying to have a good time here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're on the road to recovery. And it definitely did make a little bit of a challenging week for me to be able to navigate everything everything and uh you know having to have you out of commission because you weren't allowed to drive when you had your muscle relaxers meant that i had to figure out how to get kids back and forth from school and make all of your meals on top of working and school so i was definitely pretty tired this week but i accomplished some big milestones for my dissertation progress and i'm well on my way and I'm very, very excited. But the bad news is, is no. that the university still hasn't announced whether or not we're going to have a virtual graduation or a reduced capacity in-person graduation. Well, even if it's reduced capacity in person, it's kind of like, like who's going to go to that? I mean, who gets picked to do that? Well, we would be able to bring like, you know, two, maybe three people with us. And I would... I would prefer to be able to actually go through that and I could get a cute USC mask and actually like go to campus and walk through graduation. But ultimately, you know, whatever's going to be is going to be. And I've just come to this point in life where it's like, stop 
expecting that things are going to happen and just realize that nothing is certain until it's certain right now. And the better thing for me to do for my own mental well-being is to just accept it. Accept whatever they're going to give you. You, yeah. a lo- as long as you still get that diploma and you still get all these certifications and, and it's official, official, you know, that's, yeah. what, that's what really counts anyways, the way I look at it. I mean, the ceremony is just for a uh, facade and the Not act- a facade. I mean, it's a rite of passage. Well, I wouldn't it, say it's a facade. It dude. is. But what I'm saying is that the main <laughs> thing that really matters is the actual degree. That is true. And I am very excited for that. But one other exciting thing that did happen to me this week is well, like, what? is I got accepted to the International Golden Key Honor Society. What is that? So it's an honor society for um, different students that are in the top 10% of their university. And so I got accepted to it. And um, then there's another one that I'm under consideration to be accepted to. And that's really exciting because it gets to go on your resume and you get to like uh, it's kind of bragging rights, I guess. But kind of like being a special fraternity. It is. Yeah. It's like a little bit of a status symbol. You know, I was in something like that too back in high school. I forget what it was called. There was a club like that I was uh, nominated to be in. It was like uh, what was it called? Like most uh, likely to be on the cover of GQ. That's that was too. <laughs> that was that was the, I got that back to back years on that one. But no, there was another one. It was about uh, something like uh, top something high like school kids. Who's who among American high school students? That's the one. Yeah, were, were you in that too? I was. I was, oh, and well. I was in the who's who for teachers too. I got Ooh. nominated, so wow. I had a copy of that somewhere. Now that you mention it, but oh, I think it's go. in storage, but. Anyways, it's definitely been an eventful week around the Chris and Christine household. And uh, adding to that, we had a great interview this week with a great guest. Right, Chris? Yes, we did. Hey, listen up, everybody. If you guys have kids that are in school right now, you're probably doing the home schooling from home, I bet. Or the distance learning. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Distance learning? Mm -hmm. And you you kids are probably have, what are those Chromebooks or the iPads that the schools give to the kids to take home so they can do the uh, the homeschooling type of stuff. Right. But what do you do if your kid breaks one of those things? Uh. Cha-ching, cha-ching, right? Well, coming up next, we have the CEO of the insurance company that will cover your kids' broken school devices. And we will have her on the show right after this. Hey there, K2 crew. We love having you as our loyal listeners. To keep up to date with what's happening behind the scenes, check us out on social media. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to follow our Facebook page. Yeah, tag us in your favorite fun stories. And guess what? You might just end up on the show. You know, I realize that a lot of you guys are working from home right now in your home offices. And if you do have a home office or home business, I want to tell you about FedEx Office. If you're just starting or having been running your company for generations, FedEx Office gives you the best way to print marketing materials, posters, signage, graphics, and so much more. With FedEx creating, editing, saving, and ordering, the orders are fast and easy. We are teaming up with FedEx and Podgo to bring our listeners 30% off your next order of $100 or more. You have to go to podgo.co slash FedEx. That's podgo.co slash FedEx for 30% off that next order. FedEx, the world on time. And welcome back, everybody. Today, we have another fabulous VIP guest. She is a CEO of the company School Device Coverage. Welcome to the show, Bliss Landon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, we are so excited for you to be here. Hey, Bliss. How are you doing today? Good. How are you guys? We're doing great. It's just this wind has kind of been crazy in the weather. I'm feeling a a little bit allergy-like. How about you? Me too. Definitely. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I guess it's the price of the, the, what is it, the sunshine tax that they call it in Southern California. (laughs) I guess. Along with all the other taxes. Yeah. (laughs) Are you you also in the uh, Southern California region? I am. I'm in Calabasas. Um, So we're probably about 20 minutes inland from Malibu to 
give you a reference? Ooh, Calabasas, the land of the Kardashians. Yes. So we're, we're, our office is actually in Agora Hills, but right next door is Calabasas. That's where I live. So I live and work very close to each other. And that's where the Kardashians live. Yes, I see them all the time. Are you guys like BFFs, the best friends now? You guys have like uh, each other's house for dinner? Uh, that'd be uh, no, no. <laughs> no. I know where their houses are, but I don't go there. I'm That's not invited. So <laughs> oh, man. Well, we would invite you over, FYI, because you sound nice. Thank you so much. I would invite you over, too. Oh, thanks. So you live in Southern California, and uh, we know that you're a CEO, but why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and who you are? Well, uh, I went to uh, San Diego State University. Yes. I, yes, I graduated from there. Um, I love San Diego. And um, I actually decided that I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to go to law school. So I had taken the LSAT and um, waiting for my test results, my dad had a third-party logistics company, and they kind of got into the small package, you know, arena that's out there and, um, you know, with the, the UPS and FedEx and started dealing with those carriers and not just big trucking companies and truckloads. And they came across uh, a competitor that's been in business as long as I've been alive. And my dad tried to work a deal with them to sell their insurance. And they said, you can sell it, but we're not going to partner with you, you know, financially or in any way. So they weren't, you know, uh, very compliant in that way. So as I was waiting for my test scores, my dad said, you know, hey, why don't you come and sell this insurance program? We're having a really hard time getting it off the ground. Um, he is, I, I was able to get my own policy and do my own thing, but I don't have anybody to sell it. So I came in and I, uh, you know, did a lot of research and found uh, where I could provide shipping insurance. So I insured uh, products or insured commodities that were shipped through UPS, FedEx, the post office, anything that goes from point A to point B. Um, and I would provide insurance at a discount. So all, all of the carriers, they insure packages, but their insurance is very expensive and they don't give volume discounts. So I looked for the, you know, the companies out there that were shipping, you know, widgets, for example, and they're right. shipping 100 to 500 of them a day and they're going all over the country. I could give them a really good deal on insurance so they would still ship with the carrier, but insure with my company at a discount. So I did that for a very long time, and that's been a very um, successful company. It's called UPIC, U-PIC Insurance Services, and um, that's been a very successful company that we've had for 31 years. Oh, wow. wow. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, just about five years ago, we got the opportunity to insure school-issued devices to kids, you know, so K through 12. Um, a, a friend of mine, her name is Michelle, uh, we've been friends since we were five years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> she started uh, working for me, and she got on a postal council committee um, through the United States Postal Service, and she was at a meeting, and a, a superintendent at a school district said, you know, do you guys offer insurance for school-issued devices to kids? And she said, no, but I, I think we could do it. And that's how it started, and we just built this program from scratch, and uh, it has taken off tremendously, especially over the past year, and um, that's kind of how School Device came to be. Wow. So now, is this a separate company from the UPIC, UPIC company? No, it is a division of the UPIC insurance company. So it's it's a division of UPIC insurance, and we call it school device coverage. Um, and uh, so it's like powered by the parent company. Okay. Hey, okay. Do you, so so do you, when you say school device coverage, are you talking about... Uh, devices that are in the actual school offices in office buildings or st student related devices no school issued devices to the kids to the students oh. um, we do we do some teacher issued devices a lot of a lot of uh, times the districts will want coverage for the for the teachers as well but it's the laptops chromebooks ipads it's all those devices that the kids are issued at the beginning of school and they use that as their learning device for the year. So whether they bring it home, you know, which they're home right now, um, or they take it to school, we ensure those devices. Okay, got it. So our two littlest ones are at a school. It's a computer science magnet program. And so 
um, all along, they've had Chromebooks that they bring home and Mm -hmm. uh, they get checked out every year and we get a form to purchase insurance. And before Chris and I uh, got married, you know, each year that comes home and uh, I, I didn't know that the kids didn't have insurance coverage. I didn't even know that it was like a real thing. I thought like, okay, kiddos bring home a computer and if something happens to it, the district just fixes it because it's part of like, it's basically like a textbook. If your textbook gets ruined, uh, you have to like, in California we have, it's called Williams compliance where a student has to have access to their their textbook. So I just thought, mm-hmm. well, a computer is basically that. So if it gets broken, I don't have to pay for it. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Big yeah. cut wrong. Yeah. What happened to Mason's uh, computer? What did he do? Why don't you say it, Chris? Okay. Well, he took his little <laughs> the little keys off the keyboard. He lost like four keys. He's like, well, I don't use it anyways. I just use the mouse. It's oh, like, geez. well, you're going to need those keys eventually. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's eight. So Aww. he was thought that it was fun to just pick off these little keys because he figured out oh that gosh. they could still function with the little sensor underneath it. But I, he was trying to like... <laughs> type something this was like I don't know months and months and months ago this is like pre-covid because Uh like I said they've had these devices and I had to like go type in a zoom link for him once he went to distance learning and I'm like Mason where's the L (laughs) and he says I didn't need it (laughs) oh that is so funny I love hearing the stories that's one I have not heard yet but there are so many stories of of instances where kids do the craziest things with their with their school devices it's it's pretty funny. Right. Well, so we reached out to the school to say like, okay, now we're on distance learning. He really needs his Chromebook to be functioning. Uh, Can we drop it off to get repaired? And we get an email back. Um, Yes, you can drop it off at this address. And uh, depending on the extent of the damage, the charge is estimated to be, it was like on the low low piece of it, it was like $75. And the high end, it was going to be like 350 because depending on what, if the sensors were damaged and I was like, okay, so is there a deductible that we pay? (laughs) We didn't have insurance. Oh no. So are you guys having, are you guys, I mean, obviously with a lot of kids at home doing the online schooling from home of 2020, good old 2020, uh, how has business been for you guys as far as buying insurance on those devices? Well, we've been very busy. We we um, doubled the business last year um, because of COVID, and it it just it went crazy. We we've never worked so hard. <laughs> so um, it's just you know it's a demand, and you know the numbers that you were saying seventy five dollars up to three hundred. You can buy insurance typically, you know, uh, depending on what device it is. But a Chromebook, it can it would, it would be twenty dollars for the year. Oh wow, so that's twenty dollars savings. <laughs> yeah, so twenty dollars versus seventy five, or a total loss of three hundred. I mean, it just it just makes it so affordable and workable for the school districts and for the parents. So, do you guys offer your insurance to the school districts? I mean, how do you guys approach the the? I mean, how does it go from you to the Chromebook the kids have? Yeah, so we we uh, offer insurance through the districts, and what happens? I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard of the CARES Act money. Yeah. So a, a lot of districts were able to get some of that money, and they were able to purchase insurance for all the devices for their school districts. So we we call that a district buy. And then if they don't want to do that or they don't have the funds to pay for it, uh, we'll do a parent buy. So we'll set up a portal through the school where the parents can go on and purchase the, the insurance through the school uh, district's you know website. And there's a portal to our site so that they can purchase it that way. Fantastic. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, Bliss, I don't know if you're aware of my background, but I am in education and I was a former school principal. I'm now a county level administrator. Oh, wow. I remember being a principal and going through this was um, I left my site for this current job in 2015. But part of my work was to get a one to one program going. And I remember going through the process of deciding on which devices and like trying to figure out which ones are going to be the most resilient when right, going home right. in backpacks every day. And mm-hmm. then this additional cost of insurance. And I just remember like one kiddo had an entire carton of 
chocolate milk explode oh, yeah. in their backpack. Mm. And, yeah, gross. Yeah, and then it completely fries the computer and... I would send it back to our tech services department who would evaluate it and they'd say, okay, this is a total loss. Insurance will kick in and you right. know, we'll replace the device. So that leads me to my question of like financially for you all, not, not getting into dollars and cents, but is this an industry where you're actually putting out a lot of money for replacements and repairs? Because isn't that what insurance does? Like with a car accident, they pay for a car to be, get repaired, right? Right, right. So so you you know, insurance is numbers, right? So you have a pool and you have the people that are going to have claims and then the people that are not going to have claims. And we have we've developed an algorithm that does our pricing. So we consider, you know, what kind of device it is, what the number one um the number one claim is a is a cracked screen. So, and really? number two would be liquid damage. Um, and so we take those uh, repairs into consideration. And then, you know, based on our history and how things go, we're able to, you know, bring our price down pretty far. And we're able to pay our rent and pay our bills and <laughs> pay our overhead to make it happen. And at a low cost, you know, to the end user. Um, we've, we've had a couple of school districts, you know, they didn't go upside down, but their claims were pretty bad. Oh wow! Um, so then we raised their rate for the following year, and that and makes sense. We make up for that, you know, for that loss. Um, but you no, know, insurance is a great business because it, you know, you're pooling groups of people together to get the premium up, knowing what the claims are going to probably come in at, so that you can, you know, manage the business that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like there is a lot of like analysis and uh, mathematics, and you mentioned algorithms. So yes. uh, not giving any way, away any of your trade secrets, but what is the brains behind your operation? Do you have analysts? Do you have mathematicians working for you? Like, how does that all that, work? <laughs> that's so funny that you asked that because we are, we are actually going to be hiring um, a data analyst very soon because we have so much of it. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so that is not something that we've done, you know, lately we have a really great IT department. So any, anything that we want to look at any area of our business, you know, um, on the UPIC side, you know, we want to look at what commodity has the most claims. And then on the on the school device coverage side, we want to see what device has the most claims, you know what, so it's, it's, it really depends on what the item is that's being insured. And we have that data um, based on, you know, what the customer looks like, you know, if it's a business to business type customer or, or that's on the UPIC side, but on school device, this is all the parents are, are involved on the parent buy and then the school district is a school district side and there's different algorithms for both. There's different uh, analysis for both kinds of products so based Bliss, on what happens with them. So Bliss, um, I got to ask you if you can tell me, what is the most breakable item that you insure? <laughs> <laughs> Anything with a screen on it. <laughs> <laughs> so like That's iPad, tablets, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and well, the the most popular device out there right now is the Chromebooks, oh, and yeah. the the screens crack because the kids. We have a video on our website. I don't know if you checked it out, but the kids will come home from school and they chuck their backpack into the corner. Okay, oh, yeah. so I see them do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so the screen can break at that time. The bottle of water you know, breaks open and ruins the device at that time, you know? Um, so, so that's, that's the device. It's the, it's the Chromebooks. They're the most popular device being used across the country right now. Are they, they're cheap though, right? Is that why they're, so, they're kind of cheap, aren't they? For computers go. Yeah. It, they, they range anywhere from like $225 up to 325 And it depends on if it's touch screen or non-touch. So touch screen is a, you know, about a hundred dollars more per device than the non-touch. So Chris and I were wondering, Bliss, because you mentioned like school device coverage uh, and I was looking at your website. Is there a way for us to buy coverage for our own at home devices as adults or is this restricted to just student usage? So that's a really good question. We are building that out right now and we will have that product that we're going to call that tech device coverage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are building that out right as 
we speak and we will, you know, let the world know when it's ready. Well, I love that idea. I have a MacBook that I just purchased Mm -hmm. and it's so cute and it's pink and it was very Oh, it's so cute. It's adorable. (laughs) It's so adorable. It's, I think, pink, but it's rose gold. And I I love that little, little nugget of a computer. It's so helpful. And I have like the Apple Care on it, which is very expensive. And I've thought about like, what happens if if outside of whatever their coverage is, something happens to my cutesy little computer that has my doctoral dissertation on it and how am I going <laughs> to be able to continue to do my work? And then yeah. you know, Chris and I have talked about like our podcasting computer here at home. Like, mm-hmm. is there a program? Oh, this or- old dinosaur you mean over yeah, here? Yeah, but we want to get a new computer. But then we go back to this thought of, and what happens if somebody breaks in or what happens if, you know, water spills on it? I don't know if there's a a real company that's emerged in that space yet. There really isn't. And so we, we see the void in our space for this product. And now that that's why we're building it out and we will have that finished this year. I can't give you a deadline as to exactly when it will be ready, but we see the need and we are requested this all the time. Um, because it's, you know, this product, the space for us is very new, you know, so to speak, it's just been the last few years, but it's taken off, you know, dramatically and we want to keep up with what's happening and we see the need and we're very familiar with Apple Care and it's very expensive and there's a lot of holes of coverage you know in that and we also see um holes in coverage and warranties so a lot of the um the manufacturers of devices they have warranties that they sell but there's so many limitations on the warranties that we know that this insurance product is a great product to have for you know any kind of elect- electronic device that you're using at home or at school. Uh, Bliss, uh, what do you guys do any kind of like uh, data recovery with the devices or do they consider a total loss? Yeah, we don't do, we don't do anything with the data on the device. They just get fixed and that's it. Okay. So if a, if a kid had a Chromebook or a teacher had a Chromebook or a device of some sort and it was insured with you guys mm-hmm. and they had say, I mean, just hypothetically speaking, say they had, I don't know, all the report cards for all the kids on a device and they lost it all. <laughs> How could you guys help that out? You know, we don't, we don't do that, but you know, I think that would be something that the school would have to, you know, work out and, and be in control of because we don't want to be responsible for data on devices. Yeah, that makes so much sense, especially when you're dealing with student personally identifiable information that gets into a whole different space of data Ex- privacy. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and liability. Uh, yeah. But something you just said really, it resounded with me about the difference between warranties and the insurance. And I'm going to bird walk for just a second. But when okay. Chris and I got engaged back in, was it 2019, Chris? Yes, it was, baby. <laughs> September, <laughs> September 2019. And we went in person together to pick out the ring and they asked us, do you want a warranty on it? And there were so many things that were and weren't covered. Mm-hmm. And then one of, I ha- we got engaged and then I happened to be at a work meeting the next day and was showing off my ring. And one of my male colleagues said, um, well, did you get um, insurance on your ring? And I thought, well, no, because I didn't. I mean, I thought homeowner's insurance will cover if it gets stolen. And he explained the difference between a warranty and like jewelry insurance. And so Chris and I opted to get insurance versus a warranty. And it's so inexpensive compared to the warranty and it covers so much more. So it would make sense that, um, that school districts would want to get supplemental insurance for their devices versus just going for a warranty. And then, you know, as you build out this space that individuals might want to actually purchase it for their home computers. Exactly. Exactly. So we, we see that need and that's the next step for us is to, you know, take it home to the parents and anybody else that wants to insure their devices. Um, another, another really important part of what we do or, or the coverage that we, um, that we provide is that the insurance is transferable. So let's say that your kid, you know, breaks their device at school and they get a loaner device. Well, the insurance transfers to the loaner device until you get that, the original device repaired. So that's really important to know too. So you're always covered and a warranty won't do that. There's no transferability with a warranty. 
Okay. And then uh, a lot of the warranties too, they have limited claims. We have unlimited claims. So you could break it a million times as you want and you still get to fix it? <laughs> well, yeah, we <laughs> we might think you have a problem if you keep breaking it over and over again. We Target might have practice. to investigate that. But yeah. Um, but yeah, and then they also, many warranties, they don't cover loss and theft. And we do have some school districts where that's all they purchase is loss and theft. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it's very Ooh. inexpensive. We have a school that we do and it's $15 uh, for loss and theft. And that's what their main concern is because of, you know, where they're located. And so we're able to customize the insurance depending on what the needs are of the school district. Well, that's a fantastic approach and definitely very thoughtful on the behalf of the district. So but I wanted to switch gears just a little bit, Bliss, away from okay. the specifics of your company. And I wanted to ask you about you. Okay. So uh, <laughs> your your bio states that you're a CEO and in examining the heads of insurance companies and tech companies, it seems like it's really dominated by male CEOs. So what has your journey been like as a female CEO in this space? It's been interesting, <laughs> to say the least. So I mentioned that I had a competitor that's been in business as long as I've been alive. And they were a group of, you know, an all boys club. It was all men. Mm -hmm. And I started going to these trade shows to promote, you know, my product. And they were so awful to me. They were so disrespectful. Aww. Yeah. They would they would leave their candy with their logo, like a big pile of it in my booth at the end of the day. If I had to take an elevator and they needed an elevator at the same time, they wouldn't get on with me. Oh, so wow. they were yeah. So they were very disrespectful. I don't know I don't know if it's just because I was a competitor coming into their space or it was also because I was a woman competitor coming into their space. It could have been both. A little bit of both. Yeah, it could have been a little bit of both. Yeah. I don't know. But the other, the good part of being a woman in an all, you know, male dominated industry was that you stuck out. <laughs> so, right. you know, you, um, you could, you could get the attention of the, of a man to come and talk to you. They, they might want to talk to you more than they might want to talk to the man that's in the booth next to you, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because women are, are not to stereotype, but sometimes we're seen as more welcoming and nurturing yeah. and And we're smiling inviting. and mm -hmm. yeah, we're we're a little more engaging, maybe, you know, we're more friendly sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. It, it appeared that way. So as you've encountered some of those biases, um, whether it was from a competitive side or a gender based side, how has that influenced how you approach leading your organization? Um, well, you know, I, that's a hard question. I don't, I don't know exactly what, <laughs> what to say about that. I mean, other than I'm, you know, because I'm, I'm a woman, I get opportunities, you know, to do business with other companies where that's a requirement for them. We even mm -hmm. have school districts that, that, uh, say that they need to, you know, be open to, uh, female, you know, owned businesses. Right. And so I seek out those opportunities, you know, also, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I, um, that's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. I just was okay. wondering because, um, in some of my schoolwork, one of the things that I started out studying was the journey of women CEOs in trying to kind of create their own niche within the industry. And mm -hmm. it could seem like, it could be very difficult to make a name for yourself. Again, not to stereotype, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I I hear things about like women feeling like they're not taken seriously. But I was wondering what the benefits were, and it sounds like because of a lot of diversity initiatives and school districts being more conscious of that, that it might actually have created more of an open door than a glass ceiling. Yeah, and, and I, I never, I never felt um, that I, I couldn't do my job, or I couldn't do certain things, or I didn't have the same opportunities as another company. Um, so I never, I never felt that way. But that might just be my own, you know, determination to be successful in this space. I don't, I don't know. Um, my dad was my mentor and my biggest supporter and really guided me through, 
you know, just growing the business and, and business decisions. And whenever I felt I needed a male <laughs> next to me, I'd bring him in, you know? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So, and, and sometimes you do feel that way, j- like you said, to be taken seriously. Um, and I was very young when I started working. I was 22 years old when I started the business. So, oh, wow. you know, I, I don't think I was taken very seriously, although I was very determined, very focused, and I worked my butt off. Um, but not everybody knew that from the outside, you know, they don't know your work ethic. They just see you at a show for a couple days and then that's, that's it, you know? Right. Um, but, but I did get into some situations where I, I would tell my dad, I said, you know what, I need, I need the, the big man to come (laughs) with me to this, to this meeting just to give credibility, um, you know, authority, you know, a male figure and a male, you know, I, I, I deal with, you know, shipping managers on the UPIC side and then on the school side, there's, you know, there's a lot of women, you know, female principals and things, right. but we're dealing with technical departments. Those are mostly male. They're not, we don't come across a lot of females in setting up uh, if we're dealing with the, you know, technical director of a school. Right. So that's still kind of a male dominated industry. So Bliss, uh, will you talk about ensuring uh for school and school devices what is it for all grades or is it for elementary school or for everybody we will we will do any grade and we do colleges we do charter schools private schools um we're just looking for groups you know uh because the volume needs to be there to offset the claims if that makes sense oh what, yeah what that's a better deal for us is, is there a certain percentage where that where that uh, what percentage are you talking about when that happens the tipping point for that well Um, if they can stay, you know, at the 50% mark, that's really great. Okay. Um, when they start to get close to, you know, 60, 70, that's not good. That's not a good rate. So we try to keep them below 50 because of our operating expenses and things that we have to do. But again, on, if there's volumes, if there's, you know, a district that has a hundred thousand devices, you know, we're going to give them really good pricing on that. Oh, okay. So it all that all plays into, you know, our our quoting for the prices and things like that. Yeah. Now, living in Southern California, thinking of like a San Diego Unified with hundreds of thousands of students, it you know, as they're doing one to one devices in a lot of the school sites, it would make sense that there would be a different break even point for them versus like a two room schoolhouse up exactly, in the hills. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So so even though we want the percentage to remain the same for any, you know, size school district, the the premium is gonna be lower for a larger school district. Do you find that um like like what is the if you have like say a hundred thousand devices out there that you're insuring, of those hundred thousand devices, what percentage do you think of those devices uh gets come gets claimed on for a damage um sorry bliss he's nerding out right now <laughs> i'm just curious about the numbers that's all i know you're a numbers guy i know i know um you know i would say it's anywhere pretty much guarantee there will be 10 percent of those devices will get claimed okay okay for sure but the majority it's it's more than that it just depends on you know what the device is where they're located what they're doing with the device, if they're bringing it home, not bringing it home, you know, if it's staying in one place, not staying in one place. So it just depends on all those things. So um, your your bottom is 10, and then it goes from there. Oh, that okay, makes so, a lot of so sense. So guaranteed 10 is go- are going to fail for sure then, right? Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, listening to you talk about the insurance industry and about your company, it seems like you're very passionate about your work. So what's at the root of that passion that motivates you to keep growing your company? Bills. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all have those? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I I have been really fortunate that my two older children are working for me now. Oh. And so it, it's kind of like I've got this family legacy going on right now. So my dad set me up in business. He also set my brother up in business in a separate business. But so I've had this business from my dad. My dad's been my mentor and, and you know, has been with me every step of the way helping, you know, just when I need him. He's not actually here in the office, but, you know, he's there. And so now I have my two older kids uh, working for me doing sales and they're doing a phenomenal job. And so I'm even more motivated now, more than ever, 
to make sure that this thing, you know, grows and, and does a great job and we have a great product that's sustainable for another 30 years for them, you know? No. So I, you know, that keeps me very passionate about, about doing what we're doing. And then, you know, we're really providing a service right now for kids with this whole COVID, you know, situation where at home learning, that's what you have to do now. And the kids need their devices and we need to, you know, give a solution to parents who, you know, maybe they can't work anymore because now they have to watch their kid at home or right. they've lost their job or whatever the circumstances were. We feel like we're really doing you know, a good service to kids and adults out there who really need that help. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So now, Bliss, you had mentioned at the beginning of our interview that you live in Calabasas. And recently we had a celebrity that was on our show from the Calabasas area, um, kind of a big deal. He's in the country music scene. Have you (laughs) ever heard of the artist Jake Parr? Oh, yes, I have heard of him. Isn't he fantastic? He really is. Have you listened to (laughs) some of his new singles that are out? I have. I have listened to them over and over and over again. I love his singles. That's awesome. How did you discover him? Was it like at a local... um, (laughs) Sorry, we're (laughs) laughing. Is it at like a local bar or something? I discovered him at Tarzana Hospital on (laughs) September 28th, 1994. (laughs) (laughs) What? Were you his nurse? (laughs) I'm his mother. No way. <laughs> yes, wow. I'm so pr- I'm so proud of him. He's so talented. We have a lot of music in our family. My mom was a singer in the 60s. And so it's just been really fun to watch him. I I volunteered him for every musical anything his whole life. So Aww, I knew he had the mom. talent. Yeah, and I knew he had talent from a really young age. And um, music has just been a huge part of, you know, his life. So is it a part of your life? Are there any hidden talents of, like, should we see Bliss Landon in lights anytime soon on a stage Uh, coming near us? No, I, you know, I sang in high school. I sang in a small group. I went to LA Baptist High School. It's over here in the Valley. And um, I sing in church on occasion. I'll sing with him. I'll, I'll back Jake up at church. And, um, but that's, that's the extent of my music career. (laughs) Hey, so what's Jake up to today? He's, he's here in my office. He's, uh, he's cranking out the sales over there. Oh, look at him go. Look at him be hustling. <laughs> well, he was fantastic on our show, just as you have been. And we loved his music. And that just speaks to the great family that he came from. Oh, thank you so much. That's a, that's a really nice compliment. I'm really proud of him. Oh, that's fantastic. And so um, we invited Jake to come down here after COVID to, not that we have the right to do this, but to invite him <laughs> to perform at Moonshine Flats, because I pretend that that's like my hang. Okay. And so um, we told him that when he comes down to perform, we're going to go country line dancing. So the question is, Bliss, are you going to put on your boots and come dance with us? Of course I will. Oh, my yes. gosh. I look forward to it. Yes, I will come in a minute. <laughs> that will be like this so much fun where it's like the Chris and Christine show country music dancing reunion. I love it. I love it. I, you know, I used to line dance all the time, but they're so really? hard now. The ones that they do now, I don't know any of them. I'll have to have Jacob uh, teach me how to do a couple before we head down there. (laughs) Oh, that's what we were telling him. I have to watch YouTube videos and (laughs) I like watch the girls dancing around and spinning around. And it's like something between like a super fast waltz plus like booty shaking plus exactly twerking plus Uh, tap dancing plus (laughs) plus plus ballet and yeah I don't like even know this, if my body can move like that anymore <laughs> yeah mine, mine can't but and I look like a hot mess it's like you watch those movies of the awkward middle school girl who like goes out on the dance floor and right, or like right. what was that movie Chris white girls uh probably white yeah. chicks or whatever that I movie was yeah I'm like like the awkward oh, dancers there that's so funny that's so funny he, he'll be embarrassed of us we should just probably stand in the corner and just cheer him on while he sings that's all we can no, do oh <laughs> totally gonna go out there and embarrass him and he'll be like i don't know them <laughs> that's so funny well he said you guys were so much funny he, he really enjoyed your show so well, that we was great i was we totally I was really enjoyed happy. having him too oh I know. good well thanks for having him he's 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 so talented and he, he's a writer and a performer and, um, you know, it's just hard right now with COVID, everything's shut down and, right. but hopefully it'll be up and running soon. 
Yeah, but you know what's amazing is that even though the music industry has kind of come to a pause, the insurance industry hasn't. And if anything, uh, it sounds like you and your company are well positioned to not just uh, keep growing right now, but that you have some great growth strategy coming up in the future. And so it sounds like we're going to hear some more great things coming out of your company. And maybe we'll see Bliss Land in on the front of the Fortune 500 magazine first. Sounds fantastic. Soon. Sounds <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're working really hard and we're... Um, you know, hiring more people. We have to move into a bigger building. Like we are really? We really took a huge growth spurt last year. So we're really excited. Yeah. So it's, we're very blessed. We're very excited about all the things happening here. Can you, can you, I don't know if you can say this or not, but can you say how many different uh, states you guys are insuring uh, for schools? Oh, for school districts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it all California know, really or what? Don't, I'm sorry. What'd you say? Is, is it only in California? Oh no, we're, we're nationwide. Okay, gotcha. We, yeah, gotcha. we have school districts in New York, Florida, Texas, all over the all over the country. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. you know, Bliss, I've kind of drank the Kool Aid learning about your company, and I hear that you're hiring a, a data person. So, where can I put my resume in? <laughs> you're so funny. I'm ready for well, my just, interview. Just go to schooldevicecoverage.com and just. Submit it there. (laughs) Awesome. Well, for all of our listeners today, we hope that Bliss has helped you to understand what the implications are for not insuring your child's device if it's not provided (laughs) by your school district. And schooldevicecoverage.com is the website. Is that correct, Bliss? Yes, that's the website. Yeah. Awesome. And you know what I've loved so much is getting to know you and your story. And I feel like anytime I get to know more about a company and their heart and their passion, it helps me be more invested in their product. And so for all of our listeners out there, we hope that you felt the same and connected with Bliss and her story. And we'll look up schooldevicecoverage.com to ensure that your child's device is well cared for. Right, Chris? Absolutely. Don't break it. Don't break it. (laughs) Drop the milk away. (laughs) Well, actually, they should should break it. Give Bliss some extra uh, business. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. So, Bliss, is there anything that you'd like to leave our listeners with before we wrap it up for today? Well, if, if there's anybody out there who thinks this is a great product for their student, call their district and tell them that you want insurance. Give us our name and we'll set it up. We're, we're here for you. That's fantastic. Well, thanks so much for being on the show with us today, Bliss. Thank you. Thank you so much. So nice to talk to you guys. The Pod Breed Network is strictly for the small podcasts that are up and coming in the vast world of podcasting. Podbreed is made up of many diverse podcasts coming together to achieve the same goal of being the best damn podcast network on the planet. Find out more at podbreed.com. Well, that was a super interesting interview, Chris. Yes, it was. Learning the insurance side of stuff with uh, kids' school electronics. Yeah, absolutely. And hearing about Bliss's journey to become a CEO and you know, coming up with these outside of the box ideas, it's just very admirable. Yes, it sure is. You know, um, you know, our little kids, you know, they've got their devices <laughs> yeah. and, and they always have these Chromebooks and other things like that. And they keep breaking them or, or I hope they don't break them, you know, because they throw them in the backpacks and they throw them on the floor and they just toss them and like whatever, you know, but you always kind of think like if those things break. Who fixes that stuff, you know? Right. Because one of the kiddos iPhones just broke recently and we didn't have device coverage Wait on it. Wait a second. What? Who broke a phone? Oh, don't act like that. You know who broke the phone. But one of the iPhones broke recently and we didn't have the device coverage on it through the phone company. And so we had to find somebody to fix it. It cost $165 out what? of our pocket. I know. What? Was and it? imagine if we could have just, you know, paid for coverage through like Apple Care, like I had suggested when we got the the phone, it would have covered hey, it. I got a question. I got a question. <laughs> you have that brand new, beautiful Mac computer. Is it got a, uh, the Apple Care? On yes, it? it does. Okay, just check it. Yep, just- I do. I I take care of that for my devices because I'm that person that thinks I'd rather have the insurance than be caught without it. But I also get insurance on weird things like trips and travel and stuff like that because you never want to be caught where you can't like get a refund and part of that reminds me of like our wedding stuff when we didn't have like wedding insurance on everything and had Wait, to cancel it in what Hawaii. Is, what is wedding insurance? You can get wedding insurance like where if, like if we get divorced we're insured? No. <laughs> like if when we were planning our wedding 
if we could have gotten insurance that if something would have happened while we were planning it and that resulted in us having to cancel it like a pandemic, we would have got our money back from the insurance company. Wait, didn't we get that from the uh, hotels and everybody? Well, Well, they refunded it, but we didn't get them from everybody. We would have been able to get 100% back of our money. How much are we out still on this uh, wedding from Hawaii? Uh, I think like $2,250. Like two thousand two hundred and fifty. Two thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. I know it is, but we didn't have insurance on our wedding, and it goes to show you that even on those obscure things, it definitely pays to have peace of mind when it comes to devices, trips, and whatever con- it is. Concert tickets too. I remember when we went to iHeartRadio Festival a few years ago. Um, I opted to get the insurance on those tickets because right. it was one of those things where, like, if you could not go or whatever, you had to cancel you would get uh, your money back, but you had to pay an extra, I think it was like 50 bucks per ticket or something like that. Some crazy amount of money. Right. Um, and then you lose that, of course, if you go, I guess. But it's just an insurance policy on the, on the fact that you're not going to go or not. Right. But it does give you peace of mind where it's like, okay, I can buy this. And I know that if something comes up that I'm not going to be able to go, then I have a plan for how I'm going to not be out all this money. Right. It also depends on the price of the object, too. Like, I think I was at Best Buy one time and they're trying to sell me. They always try to sell you insurance plans on right. everything you buy. You know, I'm buying a pencil for God's sakes. So you're trying to sell me insurance on this thing. You know, who cares? But like, like anything electronic wise, it's probably, I, I really look at it like this. It's like, Anything that's less than $100, right, that you're buying electronic-wise, I would say forget the insurance on it because the insurance is probably going to be, I don't know, 30 40 bucks mm-hmm. or whatever, you know? And now you're talking – I mean, it's out, this mathematically doesn't add up. Right. So I would just you chuck the thing that breaks for like, say, $50 toy, it breaks, and get another one. Right. They do ask you for those protection plans a lot on electronics things or, you know, anything that's like digital in nature where it's like – would you like a protection plan on this for $10? I know that when I was buying the mounting hardware for the boy's bedroom, they asked me if I wanted a protection plan on that. And I think our protection plans basically insurance? Um, or is I, it more I, of a warranty? I think I don't you know, I don't know cuz some things some stores will tell you that you have X amount of days to return it, right? Right. Uh, unopened or whatever. And if this, some will say if it is open, you can't return it at all. There's there's special like clauses when it comes to things like that. Yeah. I, you know it's funny. I was when I put the built the shed in the backyard. I first moved in this place. My, right. My dad and I built this shed together, and we laid this groundwork, and the groundwork was uh, crushed grout. No, crushed uh, granite. Okay. So we had to pam- pack it down with this thing called the tamper tool. Uh-huh. Now, the tamper tool looks like a big like it's like a big shovel stick. At the end of it is this big flat like metal like like to press things down yeah you like you like stamp it down like bang bang down with it and the thing was about i think it was like 25 bucks or 20 bucks for the tool i thought great i'll just return it afterwards but home depot said oh no you can't you can't return this I said, what am I going to do with the tamper tool after I use it? But I've been using it to trash, trash the... Uh, to, crush yeah, the- compact the trash down in the big uh, trash, trash cans when we use too much. <laughs> right. So I've, you did find another use for it. But right. the funny thing was that they would not let me return it, which I thought was kind of odd. Well, you'd already used it, Chris. Yes, but when you think about a tool, especially a specialty tool that you're only going to use once. You don't return it afterwards, Dork. Why not? Get your money oh, back. Oh, come on. It's like me buying a dress for the prom and wearing it for the prom and oh, returning it afterwards. People no, do that. They, no, they, that they, is you wrong. Got, you got to get the tag and you put, stick the tag in the it's back. It's unethical. You hide the tag and then you take it right back. That's gross. That's yeah, gross. I, well, I'm sure people do it all the time. It, it's unethical. Okay. If you bought it and you used it and it fulfilled its purpose, then... You give it a new life. You don't try and get your money back. <sighs> Whatever. But that is different from insurance, where insurance, the whole purpose of it is to protect you. And so I would say, like, if you had insurance on your tamper tool, then what? maybe... I don't think you get it. What do you do? I didn't break it. It's I don't know. <laughs> then you just keep... I don't know. I was trying I was trying to make that logical reasoning, but I don't get... Uh, you but you know, get. the funny thing is about electronics is that electronics always seem to break. They always seem to, like, or either they break... Or people always just upgrade. You know, like you think about how many iPhones have you gone through in your life? Three. Only three iPhones? Yep. Get out of here. Which uh, one? Four. Four. Oh, one okay, of them. Okay, okay. I, okay. So I had an iPhone 7. And before that, what'd you have? Well, hold on. I had an iPhone 7. Before that, I had an iPhone 7. And um, my iPhone 7, something about it stopped working. Like there was the volume button wasn't working. I couldn't, or no, it was the, I couldn't turn the ringer on and off. That button just wasn't working. So I had, 
Apple Care on it. And so I contacted Apple Care and they sent me a new phone. Well, there you go. And before that, I had an iPhone 7. So you're welcome. No, you, so you're saying you started an iPhone 7? No, before that, I had like one of the older iPhones, like the little ones. But I waited a long time because I had the little Nokia phone. And it was so cute, and I had a little zebra cover on it, oh, and I loved it. Wow, it wasn't it was wasn't the flip one; it was like the little, like the long skinny one that kind of looks like a remote. Oh yeah! And everybody was getting iPhones, and they were like talking about texting. But I loved my little zebra cover on my phone. Of course, because you can't get it anywhere else. Uh, they, uh, they didn't have zebra covers on iPhones yet. No, huh? they didn't. And I liked having. I am old school, where I like to have the click buttons, or I liked like things to be simple. I don't like change when it comes to my technology. And so even like upgrading my phone recently to the iPhone 12, I waited until they came out with the 12 mini so that it would be the same exact size. And I still don't like that I don't have the little button that I can push that it uses my face. It irritates me. Oh, I know. I shouldn't have done it. Uh, I was happier with my seven. Whatever. Whatever. But you know what? Like I started my iPhone journey on iPhone 2, which was called iPhone 3G. And then I I didn't get one every single year. I skipped a few years. So I'm thinking I've had that one. I had a 4S. Then I think I had a 5S. But you like to chase the new technology. Not always. I think you get like a high out of it. No. Okay. A a little bit. (laughs) But not always. You're always looking for the newest trucks and the newest flashy things. I do. I am on Instagram. If If you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice I'll post a lot of like the new truck coming out, the new Ford, the Raptor they're showing. I love that thing. So the new Roush stuff, the new Mustang. The new Bronco. New Bronco. The new Z. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you God. like new and flashy. I do, but it doesn't mean I got to jump onto it right away. Right. But if you like new and flashy, then why wouldn't you insure your stuff? Because is your mentality like, why get insurance? Because if it breaks, I'll just get a new, better something. Right. It forces me to get the next thing. Does that oh, make sense? Oh, well, I could see how you would do that, but you end up spending more money in the long run instead of like taking care of your no, technology. No, you take care of your stuff and then, and then you only get upgrade it when you have to. But you're not saying that you do it when you have to. You upgrade it constantly, right? No, I do not. I oh. only upgraded my other phones when I had to. Oh, okay. And that, that made any sense. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. But um, we do have insurance like on the house and on the cars. And Oh, you bet your butt we got insurance on this house. <laughs> I, got, I got a new bathroom and a new air conditioning <laughs> unit and a new downstairs so area. So that's the point. It's like if you don't have it or you have the minimal then when you need it, you don't have it to lean back on. And so my philosophy has always been plan for the worst case scenario and feel protected with peace of mind. And I think that is the same thing when it comes to covering your own child's device from their school. Um, and if you're not satisfied with that, then you know check in with Bliss Landon and her company's school device coverage. And then be on the lookout for the personal device coverage that's going to be coming out in the next year or two i think that's fantastic fantastic that is awesome so babe you got anything else to wrap this up with um just that we hope that everybody has a fantastic week and it's gearing up for valentine's day so don't forget that valentine's day is just about a week away and here is your warning from christine you're welcome we know you've lost track of days because of hashtag covid but Love Day is coming. Hey, speaking of last of days, tomorrow happens to be Sunday. And you know what Sunday is? Well, um, the day of rest. It is the Super Bowl tomorrow. Uh, or today when this uh, episode comes out. Yes. Who do you want to win? Um, it's, the team that wears red. Oh, that, actually, they both do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's so I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't but. know. I've been seeing all of these like memes and, and gifts about uh, Mahomes and Tom Brady. And oh my gosh, there was this funny one that this girl did. And it was to like a, a parody from one of the songs from The Sound of Music. And it was, um, they called it Seven Rings. Oh, and it was yeah. like her dressed up as him talking about going after seven rings. And like the first time that he got his first ring. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was What's like six years old. Yeah, <laughs> learning how to write his letters. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. So tomorrow or today happens to be the Super Bowl, and I know you probably can listen to us today because it came out on the Super Bowl. So enjoy the game, and we hope that one of the teams in red wins. Yeah. So I have a question yeah. um, because I know they both wear red. Uh, I don't even know the names of the teams in the Super Bowl. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Is it's one a, the Chiefs? Chi- yes. And then the Buccaneers? That's right. Yes. <gasps> Oh, hey, hey! did you know that the last time the Buccaneers won a Super Bowl was never was here in San Diego? 
1872? No. It was like 1990. No, no, it was like 2001 or two. No, it hasn't been in the 2000s. There's no way. Maybe it was 2000. Yeah, but are they the pirate team? The Buccaneers are? Yes, they are. They are the pirate and team. And the funny thing is, is they beat the Raiders here in San Diego. Oh, that's funny. It that's was, really funny. It was it's like the, the pirate showdown. It was a pirate showdown. It was. <laughs> so today is Super Bowl Sunday. Enjoy it. And, and if you want to know more about us, you always go to our website. That is www.chrisandchristineshow.com. And that's Chris and Christine with K's. And we're going to take this out on what's your bet on who's going to win? I think good old Tommy. He can't, you can't put good old Tommy Brady. So he's going to bring the seven rings? I think he is. All right. Well, that's, that's Chris's guess. And we will find out when we're back with you next week. Remember this week that life is too short to wake up in the morning with regret. So love the people who treat you right. Forget about the ones who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. If you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said that it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward. <laughs>